I went to uh, my second home today because the House Labs foundation and powder launched today. And now I have them. So we're going to do a first impressions wear test. Now always take first impressions with a grain of salt, though I will say I'm pretty good on the first try, but foundations are a little bit sticky. But I really couldn't wait. I wanted to see what House Labs could do with complexion. I'm not going to lie, something about it, this feeling inside me, I'm like, I think it's going to be good. <laughs> so you can get this right now on the Sephora website, House Labs website, and in I think like 500 Sephora stores. The foundation itself is going to be $45. We're gonna just get into the foundation and then we'll do the powder. I do have the powder. So like I said, $45. Now this foundation has like 50 shades and it was really intimidating to look on the website to see which shade I should get and I'll explain a little bit some tips that I have. The details of this foundation and this is what I like, a natural finish. I tend to prefer natural finish over glowy finish which is really popular right now because normally a natural finish will turn into a glowy finish anyways with wear. It's that perfect in between. It's clean, long wearing, medium coverage and it is with fermented arnica that helps reduce redness, even skin tone, and protects from environmental stress, allegedly. Let's go ahead and open her up. I'll talk about the shades that I got. So here is the box that the foundation comes in. It's called the Triclin Skin Tech Foundation, by the way. Forgot to tell you that. And it is one fluid ounce. And it's just the kind of cardboard recycled packaging. I ended up picking up the shade 175 Light Neutral. Now listen to this, especially if you are ordering this online. Typically, I would say I'm a light medium complexion when it comes to found... <sighs> struggling to open this. So typically when it comes to foundations, in terms of just shade description, I normally pick up the, I can't open this, hold on. I normally pick up the light medium with a neutral undertone. The light medium with neutral undertone on the website, the model was much darker than I, so I wasn't sure. And I did go into store, and unfortunately, since I went like right when they opened, they hadn't filled the display up fully, so I couldn't really get in there and test. But the model that they have in the photo online is very true to how the foundation looks. Like, I'm stuck in my head. I'm a light medium with a neutral undertone. The model definitely looked darker than me. I swatched that color in store. It looked like the model and not like it would fit me. And I felt like the light neutral was going to work for me based on how the model looked. But I was, wasn't sure because whenever I do that, then it ends up being too light for me. And from what I can see, I really do feel like light neutral is is my color so the shade descriptions run deeper than what you're probably used to so if you're my skin tone light 175 I think is our shade we'll see I didn't get to put it on my face but anyways lots of shades a little intimidating here's what the packaging looks like it's quite luxe very heavy it looks so nice okay how does this work this is the top, by the way, the cap. It looks very, very luxe. We're gonna shake well, and let's look at the consistency of this. Here's the consistency. You can see it's a little bit runny. Okay, let's try it out. Ooh, perfect shade for me. Yep, definitely go by what the model looks like on the website compared to your skin tone and not the shade description. Oh, I just used my finger to push this in. Wow, that looks good. Okay, I meant to do this as a sponge side, but it blended out like butter with my fingers. <laughs> this might be a foundation that works good with fingers. I'm gonna use my sponge to press it in. Then again, push it in, push it in. See how she does on the nose. This is one good layer. I think it looks pretty nice, very skin-like. Definitely a true natural finish, which I enjoy. Looks good. I'm gonna get a little bit more and try and build up on my cheek and around my nose where I have a little bit more redness. It definitely is not like a smoothing foundation by any means, but it does have a very skin-like finish. I think it looks pretty. We're gonna let it set though. I'm gonna get one more pump on my hand. This is how much a full pump is. I would say I did like a pump and a quarter to get this side of my face, so probably two pumps is good unless you go really light with your foundation. I'm going to use a Refer 31 brush to apply this side, spreading out so nicely with a brush. Wow. Because it's a more liquidy consistency, it really just spreads really good. But given how thin the formula feels, now it's not the most thin, but it's more liquidy than I anticipated, it does leave a true medium 
medium coverage. They aren't buffing. I would say the description of it that they give so far is holding pretty true. I'm gonna use my sponge, push it in, get off the excess. What do we think? I think it looks pretty good. The most recent foundation I tested out was the Patrick Ta Foundation Duo, and I did not like it. Update, didn't like it. I think this looks better, but we'll see about the wear. It's got a skin-like finish, but it does look a tad thick. Like I can see that I am wearing makeup, which is very interesting because it does have that skin-like finish. It's just a bit thick and I didn't apply that much, especially since I'm also using a sponge to kind of get up the excess. But overall, I think it looks good. If you struggle with texture and you love kind of the smoothing, blurring foundations, this did not do anything to improve pores. It let my pores be though. I think it looks good. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna let this settle down. I'm gonna do a little bit of makeup and then we'll get into the powder. So I just did my eyebrows and I popped on the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Concealer, which an update on this, I still don't know. It's a weird concealer. Well, I obviously don't love it, but I don't dislike it. Anyways, besides the point, let's get into the powder. So this is called the Bio Blurring, which I'm happy that it says it's blurring because maybe that's why the foundation itself isn't very blurring. Talc free, I know that's a key term a lot of you like, loose setting powder. So there are five different shades shades in this, which is awesome. I just picked up the translucent shade. I thought that would be good for me. It's $38, not a cheap powder. House Labs is bordering luxury pricing. They're very pricey. Anyways, it provides a light coverage, clean, vegan, cruelty-free, skincare infused that blurs imperfections, smooth skin, and optimizes makeup performance. All right, let's, let's get into it. It's the same packaging as the foundation. There is seven grams of product in here. Okay, let's see. The way I cannot open these boxes. <laughs> Okay. Packaging it has a silver top with the slant on there. It's made in Italy and has an 18 month shelf life. Where's the foundation made in? Foundation's made in Korea, by the way. Always something that interests me. Okay, are we ready? Two, rumble. So this is the inside. Let's peel the sticky off. You ready? And then boom, here's the powder. So we have kind of a piece of mesh right here. I don't know, how does one, I can't really put it in the cap, but I always like to get a little extra product. So we're gonna use a brush first. This is a Refer 19 brush. I'm just gonna dip it in the mesh. Let's see, so right here is how I can tell a powder is blurring or not. And this does have blurring properties. I love a good blurring powder. Ooh, this is nice. I like that, okay. But under the eye. I'm liking the powder. I think the powder looks really good. It's not like a feather light powder. You know how some powders you sometimes can't even tell you are wearing powder or applying powder. It's not like that, but it's, it's got a little bit of oomph to it, which I prefer because I feel like that holds the foundation in better. That looks very, very nice. Powdered side versus non-powdered looks so good. Okay, I'm gonna apply powder the way that I like to apply powder. So I tried to push the powder towards the top. I'm gonna take my damp sponge. I'm gonna set my makeup, I swear. If you love a blurred look, do this with your powders. It makes the biggest difference. I feel like I'm struggling to get powder out of here. So this is not really good to apply with a damp sponge though because of the way that the packaging may is made. You can't really get any powder out. <laughs> so you might as well just use a brush. So the sponge application is a fail. I'm getting like nothing on my sponge. Definitely works best with a brush. I don't really like this packaging. I feel like I'm not getting the product out. I like a lot of powder. What do we think? I think it looks really good. I think I might prefer the powder over the foundation. I mean the powder right now it's not like the most hydrated look as like some of the other powders that I own but I'm not bothered by that because I feel like as time goes on today it will work itself out so I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of my makeup and you'll see the products that I put over top Makeup is all done, you guys. This is how we are looking. I think it looks really good. The 
only negative I have to say thus far is it doesn't necessarily look like it's one with this skin. It's like a little bit heavy looking, but I feel like it has potential to settle down as the day goes on and to look more natural. It's definitely not going to give you a super natural look, but I think it looks very, very good. And one thing I did not like about the Patrick Ta is I felt like that one literally stuck to the hairs of my skin and it separated so quickly and just looked really dry and cakey. I'm not getting those vibes from this foundation so far. So, so far so good. I think it's solid. We're gonna see obviously only time will tell. I will catch you guys in a few hours. Oh, and I also forgot to mention oxidation test. This does not oxidize. Just so you know. <laughs> Four hour check-in. Let's see how we're doing now. Keep in mind, did not do any wear and tear on the makeup. I did not leave my house. But I still wanted to show you because I think it's holding up well. Now you can see smile lines, but that's like, that's my face. It happens. And it is starting to look a little dry around the mouth, which has been a pattern lately, I've noticed. I would say everything looks really good. This looks like it's gonna hold up well in the heat. I'm gonna go for a walk this evening, so don't worry. We will do some actual real life tests on this, but I think overall for our mark, it looks really good. I can see it starting to think about, you know, messing up things down here, but I think everywhere else on the face, it's holding up well. I think it looks a little bit more skin-like now, still a touch on the heavy side, but I think it looks really good. I mean, I can tell you already though, so much better than the Patrick Ta. When I would put the Patrick Ta makeup on, I would just hate the way my face looked the entire day. I like the way this looks. So I will catch you guys in a few hours. Uh, I had something in my teeth. Oops. All right guys, so I've been wearing the makeup for about nine hours now. I am so impressed with how this foundation has worn. I felt like at times, like I didn't feel like it sat on my skin as the prettiest foundation I've ever used. I thought it was very nice looking, but it wasn't a groundbreaking look on my skin. If you hear keyboard clicks going on. My husband is gaming right now and I didn't want to disrupt him. <laughs> but anyways, one impressive factor about this foundation is most definitely the wear time. I'm very happy about that. You might recall at about the four hour checkpoint, my smile lines were kind of showing a little bit. They haven't gotten any deeper at all. So I'm very happy about that. I don't look too, I don't even look oily at all, honestly. Maybe just around the nose. And you can see I did scratch my nose and it did come off. This foundation is not the best in terms of setting. So if you itch or rub, your makeup will come off. So keep that in mind. But if you're able to like not rub your face, I think you'll be fine. So right here, honestly, I can just kind of move the foundation around and then fix it like that. If that, eh. That kind of didn't fix it. So that is something to keep in mind maybe when it comes to wearing sunglasses right here or anything like that. But overall, I am very happy with this foundation. As stated before, this is only a first impression. It's literally my first wear. So I'm going to have to continue testing this before I can give you my final thoughts. But I think the foundation is really nice. And I really do think that the powder complements the foundation well. They make a really good duo. So solid foundation. As always, make sure you subscribe to my channel because I do my speed makeup reviews periodically as I use the products that I mentioned in my videos more and I'm ready to give you my final thoughts. But so far, we are definitely starting on the right foot and I'm pretty happy with this foundation. I think it looks really nice. So if this is something that appealed to you, maybe you're a Lady Gaga fan, this is a great foundation. I think it's great for a lot of skin tones. I think it's going to be best for a more normal to oily skin type because I did notice on some drier patches on my skin, maybe it didn't look the greatest, but just prep your skin well and you should be fine. And, but anyways, if you've tried this foundation, please comment down below your skin type and how the foundation worked for you. Let's help each other out. That's one of my favorite parts of these foundation reviews. And thank you for hanging out with me. So yeah, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and like this video and I will catch you in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.